Hallelujah. Beloved, I greet you in the name that is above every name, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I'm coming your way again, speaking truth from back in this time, not for Stratford, speaking truth from back in. Yesterday, when I was sharing with you, I told you how I became Christian, how I received Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. What I didn't share in that story was the church I was attending, where God spoke to me to rather leave that church and go to another place and get born again. I spent two years in that church, sleeping inside the church, we wake up with the women and the men who do tarry. They pray at night. I'll be praying with them. Sometimes they will stop, finish the praying, and I'm praying. And the following day, I will go to school. I was in, in the, I think, primary school or so. You know the name of the church? The church is called Life and Salvation Church. <laughs> the irony of the story. The church is called Life and Salvation Church. And I was attending this church. And I was living in that church. And God told me rather to leave that church. And go somewhere else. And receive Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. What did that tell you about that church I was attending? Today I want to talk to you about what I call the chosen ones. I have preached already on something I call the men and the women God uses. But today, I want to talk to you about the chosen ones. And it's about the disciples. Now, you will see how Jesus chose them from Matthew chapter 4, verse 13 to 22. Mark chapter 1, verse 16 to 20. Luke 4, 31 to 32. And Luke 2, 36 to 40. But I'm going to dwell on Mark 1, verse 16. I have to pick only one verse and start with. So please, I want you to listen to me carefully. The chosen ones. Now, as Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishes. And Jesus called him. Please keep this scripture. The next scripture I want us to look at is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 to 29. And I read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 to 29. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised. I want you to underline the word despised. I will dwell more on that. Despise people. These are the people God has chosen. Yea. And things which are not. To bring to naught things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence. God said he is doing this so that no flesh should glory in his presence. Now, if you come to me, hey, come with me with 2 Chronicles chapter 16 verse 9. 2 Chronicles chapter 16 verse 9 we read, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him, hearing thou hast done foolishly, therefore from henceforth you shall have 
walls. God is his eyes is going to and fro on the earth. God is looking for men and women to use. And bear in mind the kind of people God uses. I'm saying this because it is in the heart of every true child of God to be used of God or to be used by God. It is in every heart. So how can it happen that God uses others more than the others? This is what we want to look into. Jesus chose the apostles. They were not religious leaders. In fact, one of the reasons the religious leaders hated Jesus so much because they were the religious leaders. They were expecting that if Jesus indeed is the Messiah, they were the people he should work with. They were the top guys. They were the religious folks. They were the ones. But Jesus bypassed them and chose these people Every one of the 12 disciples was a secular man working secular man. They may be Jewish people, but they were doing their own business. These were the people Jesus went and picked to work with. He was not a religious. And this infuriated the religious leaders. Aside this, even John the Baptist, who was born into the Levitical family, the son of Zacharias, they were spared that this prophet would join them and make them feel good. John the Baptist also disassociated himself from them wasn't doing anything with them, detached himself from them. So the two key people that after 400 years, God wasn't speaking to them. Heaven's Broadcasting Corporation wasn't speaking to them. When God decided to communicate with them again, the two key people he has chosen were not doing anything with them. They hated it. The more they see Jesus do great things using the disciples and his fame was growing, the more bitter they became and they started planning and plotting to kill him. You know, when we can easily become religious without knowing. And one of the most common mistakes religious people make is to put faith in themselves. I will give you an example. Slightly before the lockdown, before the coronavirus, a very good friend, very good friend, we all grew up in the same church fellowship and everything. He lives in another country and he was talking to me. He has seen some of the, my videos on the social media. There were other Christian brothers, mature Christian brothers, who have seen it also and called me. And they congratulated me for what God is using me in the UK for. Some of them were encouraging me, praying for me. This is where you see the heart of people, some mature people. Some even were praying that they will have the privilege of standing with me. But not everybody was happy for me. This good brother of, of mine, I expect something positive might come from him. Shocked me. He told me, I'm making too much noise on the social media. But when they were we, where was I? When they were preaching and all those kind of things. In fact, he versed me, I even referred to him certain things in the past about a calling. And I said, wait a minute. I was born again before you. 
even when I was picking you from a church you were before to where you came before you left, you told me you will not come. You don't remember that. The race is not for the swift. The battle is not for the strong, but time and chance. I love God. I live in the UK. We see the need of change in this country. We are not waiting on anybody. We are giving ourselves for God to use us. And you will expect that many Christian brothers and sisters will be happy. But rather there are people who try to bring us down, talk us down, make us feel guilty. And I don't even know what they are doing in the countries where they are. This is sad. This is like the religious. They were expecting that it should be them. And it wasn't them. And because it's not about them, they turn against Jesus. Not only Jesus, but they vow to get rid of all the disciples. They will kill all of them. Whether God is with them or God is not with them. It's a shame, isn't it? Well, I haven't taken that to heart. It's his cup of tea. I pray for him that God will use him. But not with that kind of heart. I remember when we were younger, Reverend Jonathan Mate taught us a song in the Tesh Christian Fellowship. The song is a scripture. It says, I don't want to be an old wine skin filled with yesterday's old wine. I just want to be a new wine skin. Lord, stretch me. Now, God, Jesus told us that he doesn't use an old wine skin. Nobody uses an old wine skin. God will always use a new wine skin. And God will always find people to use. When the people who feel they should be used, the people who think they should be used, the people who think they are qualified enough to be used, doesn't have a humble heart, God will bypass them and pick somebody. Now, I'm saying this because there are Lots of you good Christians over there. God is doing something. And instead of you acknowledging and thank God, you feel bitter, you feel jealous. And you're speaking against something that is God is doing. And even castigating those God is using. We don't claim to be people, anybody. We are just seeing a need in the UK. And we have given our lives for God to use. Please, wherever you are, whoever you are, don't look down upon those people. Don't be embittered. Don't feel bad because it's not about you. It's not about anybody. It's about the Lord. Listen. Instead of thinking of your yourself and responsibility today, Respond to the ability of God. God is looking for people who have emptied themselves, allow him in every area of their life. People who have realized that they were nobody, but they, so they have relied totally on God to use them. People who have recognized their own inabilities and weakness and depending upon God. To use them to meet a need in the country where they are. Start thinking of what you will do for God in the country you are. And stop worrying yourself about what God is using other people to do. We are not making noise. Hallelujah. Listen, even the disciples, they didn't know this. After Jesus has chosen them and begin to use them, they also got carried away. Please, my brother and my sister, as God is using us in the UK, don't get carried away. And I don't want some of you, because some of you are falling into that category. You are trying to diminish other people's job. Listen, I seek to encourage every Christian around the world, not only in the UK, every Christian around the world to rise up 
and begin to take the gospel to their community, to their generation, to their own world, wherever they are. Whether they know much or they don't know much. The woman, and the, the Samaritan woman who Jesus saved didn't know much. But all she knew, she carried and she brought the whole city to God. That is what matters. The man in the Decapolis also reached the Decapolis. He doesn't know so much. But what he knew, he shared his testimony and he reached lost people. We have this chip on our shoulders thinking well, if this person doesn't follow this trend, doesn't believe in this, doesn't do this, then we have to dissociate ourselves. I don't go along that. I'm sorry. I'm going with what Jesus said in Luke chapter 9, verse 49 to 50. That's where I stand. Luke chapter 9, verse 49 to 50, and I read. I told you the disciples themselves, after they have been chosen, the religious didn't like them being the chosen ones in the first place. But after they have been chosen, they got caught in what we are saying. So John comes to Jesus and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in your name. And we forbade him because he followeth not with us. That's their reason. We forbade him casting devils, setting people free. Said We stopped him from setting people free from demonic oppression, devilish powers, because he doesn't follow us. He doesn't agree with us. We don't see him as part of us. So we want to spoil his ministry. Ministry spoilers. Go ahead. And Jesus said unto him, Forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us. He that is not against us is for us. Why do you go about spoiling people's ministry? Jesus said, if the person is for us, the person is preaching the gospel, reaching the laws, don't forbid him. It's for us. You know, immaturity causes that. Immaturity and insecurity. Joshua did the same thing in the days of Moses. When God decided to pour his spirit upon other people to help the work of God with Moses, Joshua got jealous. And he went to Moses and said, there are people who are prophesying. You should be the only prophet. You should be the Ogaman, Ogaman the number one man. But there are some people who are also prophesying. So let's go and stop them. Moses said, it is the desire of the Lord that all the lost people should be prophets, should be prophesying. It is the desire of God that every Christian should be used, should be a witness and evangelist. And that's where I stand. That's why I encourage everywhere, everybody wherever you are. Stand for God wherever you are. Please stop going around trying to destroy other brothers and sisters. May the Lord be with you. May you hear this simple word. The religious didn't like it. And they plotted to get rid of Jesus and all the disciples. They did. They killed some of them. And they are guilty of bloodshed. Don't be promote people who propagate the gospel. Encourage more people to do the work of the Lord. And this is what I seek to do. If you have listened to me carefully, I'm encouraging every Christian wherever you are to rise up and do the right thing. We have lingered in the church too much only dwelling on the benefits of the Lord. It is not about the benefit of the Lord. The disciples were not talking about the benefits of the Lord. They grew past that. And they entered into areas where they risk their life for somebody to be saved. They risk, they hazarded their lives for other people to be saved. 
you are too comfortable. You sit in prayer meeting every time praying. Let's pray for this need. Let's pray for this sister. My brother, my brother, I don't want to go into those things. Prayer is good. We don't have to stop praying. But after we have said amen, after we have prayed and said amen, let's reach souls. Let's knock people's door and find out who is not saved and give the gospel to them. Let's stop people on the way, on the way to our work, everywhere. For this is the purpose for which we exist. May the Lord bless you, speaking the truth to you from barking. I love you all. I'll continue to speak the truth to you. And may you be obedient to the word of God. We Christians have no business in this life. We have no business on this earth. If it is not to reach on lost souls. And don't stop anybody who reaches the loss for Jesus in any way, any form, any shape. Don't disassociate yourself from a witness, an evangelist, somebody. I know there are brothers who have done that. There are brothers who just disagree with me on things that are not relevant. And they said, I am not going to preach with you anymore. I'm not going to join you in preaching just because of a scripture that we have different opinion on. That's not maturity. That is sad. That is self exaltation. That is self self righteousness. Where, when you go, God will bring somebody else, will partner me, and will also partner you with someone. But if you have a difference with that person again, you will continue to leave. We should have learned from Paul and Barnabas, isn't it? Flimsy thing. And they were gone. When God called to them together. Sad, isn't it? We haven't learned from this. Well, I don't have a chip on my shoulder. I'm here. If you call my attention, I will listen to you and we look at the scriptures. The Lord bless you all. As I said, I love you all. I will continue to speak the truth to you. Speaking the truth from back in this time. The Lord bless you all. In Jesus' name. Amen.